In our last video, we told our remember button what we wanted it to do. And if you remember at the end of that video, we told the directions button to enable itself. So now that that's enabled, we're going to start working with the directions button, which is the button somebody will press to get back to their original location. So let's go find our directions button under the My Blocks tab. And we want to click the directions button, just a simple action for the user to complete. Now we're going to be starting an action, which in this case is pulling up a Google map. And we already did this in a previous lesson. We're going to be starting an action here, which in this case is opening up a Google map so the user can get back to their original location. And anytime you want to start a Google map, you need to use an activity starter. So we're going to go find our activity starter here and we're going to find our dot data URI block. So anytime we're working with something on the web with a URL, which is what a Google map is, we need to use the data URI block to get that going. And we're actually going to set up eight different blocks here. So in order to do that, we need to add a make text block. And we put this into the end here. Then as we start adding blocks into the socket on the right side, this block will dynamically engage to show more sockets on the right side. All right, so let's get started adding some text for these. Let me just move these over a little bit here. And we're going to start with another text block. And as you can see, this make text block here dynamically engages, opens up another socket for us. And I want you to pay close attention to what I type in here. It is in the course, but this is what you want to type when you want the activity starter to pull up a, a Google map of a specific location. So we'll type in HTTP colon backslash backslash beginning of any URL or most URLs on the web. Then we'll type in maps.google.com backslash maps with a question mark and then the letter S and ADDR for address and then the equals sign. And that's it. And next we're going to go find our current lat label dot text block. We'll plug that in. We'll add another text block. And in this one we're going to put a comma in here. And that's going to separate our latitude reading from our longitude reading. So there will be a comma in between them. Next we need to find our current longitude label. And we'll pull out the dot text block and plug that in. And next we're going to work with a little bit more of the Google Maps coding. And you can find out more about that in the course as well. There's a lot you can do with Google Maps above and beyond what we're doing right here. But in this text box, you want to put an ampersand and then the letters D, A, D, D. Oops, just two Ds. So ampersand, D, A, D, D, R, and then an equals sign. So we've got our current latitude label and current longitude label all set. Now we need to add our remembered latitude and longitude labels. So we'll go ahead and find those. And we'll pull out our dot text block. And while I'm over here, I'll just pull out a longitude.text block as well. But in the meantime, we want to place another comma in between these. So we want a comma in between the readings, and we'll just add a comma in here with a text block, and we'll plug this in. Now for the directions button, we just have one more thing to do, and that's anytime you use an activity starter, you need to tell it at the end of this series of blocks here, or any series of blocks, you need to tell it to start the activity. So we're going to go to our activity starter and a nice bright purple block. We'll find start activity and just plug that into the bottom. And that's the block structure completed for this section. So what's happening here is when the directions button is clicked, the event handler is going to build a URL for a map and call on the activity starter to launch that map. What this make text block is doing is allowing us to build the URL that we need with all of these little components here and send that to the maps application. So the resulting maps URL is going to consist of the maps domain or URL along with two parameters which are going to be the starting address here that's what the SADDR stands for and our destination address which is what DADDR stands for. And that's how these blocks work.